Here I'll demonstrate the features in cluster logic, which is found in the advanced functions pull-up drawer. To identify clusters within files, select the Builder tab, and then the Cluster tab on the left. Then, choose the files you wish to cluster, check to cluster on all events or a defined number, then tick Build Clusters. A pop-up window will display all of the parameters in the file. In the column titled Level 1, choose the parameters that you wish to be considered for the clustering. We recommend removing the time parameter from this selection. It is possible to auto phenotype at this stage, but I'll leave the phenotype and the positive MFI columns for later. Once the selection has been made, click Build Clusters. The pop-up window will confirm that the clustering is occurring, and this will disappear once the process is finished. You can close this window at any time to cancel the operation. This process can take minutes to hours depending on the size and complexity of the files. But when it's finished, you will see the list of clusters displayed in the summary window. The list of clusters is unique for each file and you will see it will update as you select different files in the file inspector. You can also start exploring the clusters by ticking on in the show column. Related icons in the toolbar can hide all displayed clusters for one sample or all samples at once. At this stage, none of the clusters are named. You can give a name to a particular population by double clicking within the corresponding cell in the name column, but the best method is to perform an auto phenotyping. The general process involves typing in the marker name as a custom label for each parameter, and then adding rectangle gates to FMOs where positive marker expression begins. Then, when the auto phenotyping process is executed, FlowLogic will rank the markers in terms of the numbers of clusters that they exist on in order to produce traditional and commonly recognized phenotypes. So the first step is select the parameters tab and then double click within the cells in the custom labels to enter the exact marker name. You can also right click and choose add to custom label, user label, and then edit accordingly. Now you can open your FMO plots and add rectangle gates on the appropriate parameters. You can have a multi-level hierarchy on the FMOs and you can also add multiple FMO gates to the FMOs. The two requirements are that the gate marking the positive expression is a rectangle and the positive expression will be taken from the left hand edge of the rectangle gate and secondly that the name of the FMO gate matches the parameter name or the marker name as defined in the custom labels column of the parameters tab. Once the gates have been set up, return to cluster logic, select the phenotype tab on the left, select all of your clustered files and click build phenotypes. From the pop-up window, we need to define the positive expression fluorescence intensity. To use the FMOs, select all of the FMOs, including the FMO gates and click update FMO. Then in the phenotype column, tick the parameters that you want to be considered for the naming of the phenotypes. You can also enter a value manually by double clicking within the cell and typing it in. Finally, click build phenotypes. After a moment, you can now click on the clustered files and see the phenotype has been added to each corresponding cluster. Now we can search through the list of phenotypes, identify a combination of parameters where the cluster should be visible and tick show to color that population. I will now demonstrate the various filtering options that can be used to identify and extract specific populations. The filtering panel is found right next to the phenotype settings. Here you can see various different filtering options. The first option relates to the cluster ID which is the ranking of the clusters. So by default, we show the top 100 largest clusters. If we deselect this option, you can see that there are in fact over 27,000 clusters. However, many only have one event. So are technically not clusters, but it shows that all events are considered in performing the cluster analysis. We can also filter based on the number of events within a cluster. So here, I can exclude any clusters with fewer than 50 events. And in this case, we get the top 120 largest clusters. It is also possible to filter based on the cluster MFI 
for the parameters that are displayed on either the X or the Y axis. So here, if I want to extract clusters that form this granulocyte population, I can filter for any clusters with an MFI on the X parameter greater than 10,000. So I'll search between 10,000 and 100,000. And when I tick on, here are our three clusters, one with the majority of events. And by ticking show clusters only in selected files, I can hide all events that aren't in these three clusters. It's also possible to apply multiple filtering options at once. So not only am I filtering for clusters with an X parameter MFI between 10,000 and 100,000, but also for clusters with at least 50 events. It is also possible to filter based on marker expression, and there are a number of different ways. Firstly, you can choose to filter on exact phenotypes. So here, if I tick CD45 and CD11B, only clusters with that exact phenotype will be displayed. Clusters with additional markers, to CD45 and CD11B, will not be included. However, selecting the markers in the positive or negative marker expression columns will filter clusters that at least express these markers or a negative for selected markers, regardless of the other markers that are expressed. So with this selection, I'm displaying all clusters that at least express CD45, CD11B and Ly6C. I can also go one step further and filter out any of these clusters that express Ly6G. As multiple clusters will often display the same phenotype, and as cluster phenotypes are used to generate fingerprints, it can be useful to display only one version of each different phenotype. This can be achieved quickly by using the Unique Phenotypes option at the bottom of the filter panel. By ticking this option, only the largest example of each different phenotype will be displayed. From here, it's very easy to generate fingerprints for each different phenotype, and then these fingerprints can be used to search for similar clusters from all files in the list. I'll now spend a little bit of time covering some of the other functionality in the summary table. So firstly, you can choose the color wheel icon when selecting one or more clusters to change the color that is displayed on the plots. You can also provide a name for a cluster by double clicking in the relevant cell in the names column. Then you can copy and paste this name to a selection of other clusters or you can use the special paste option to paste to all clusters in the table with the same phenotype. The columns in the summary table can also be sorted by double clicking on the column title. And this sorts from high to low and then again from low to high or alphabetically. So here, if I double click twice on the name column, I can bring all of my renamed granulocyte clusters together. And of course, this is still under the control of the filtering. I can also select these clusters and using the delete icon in the toolbar, remove the custom name. As you can see, you can also double click to sort on the cluster ID, the event counts, the phenotype, or even the MFI for the parameters displayed on the X or Y axes. And these values will update as you change parameters on the displayed plot. Again, if we want to identify clusters that form this granulocyte population, instead of filtering on marker expression, we can sort on the X axis parameter MFI. And here, we can tick to display those clusters that are at the top of the list. If you do wish to see the MFI for all parameters, then you can scroll to the right of the summary table. Now I'd like to demonstrate how to extract clusters and build them in the file inspector. To do this, highlight one or multiple clusters and use the icons in the toolbar. There are two options here. The first will group all clusters and form one population, whilst the second will build individual populations for each selected cluster. There are also different naming options when adding clusters to the file inspector. Firstly, you can choose the custom name that can be typed directly into the table. You can choose the displayed phenotype. You can choose a custom name. And this is particularly useful when combining clusters with a different phenotype. Or you can use the default C1, C2, C3 cluster format. 
In this case, I will extract this granulocyte population using its phenotype. So I'll select the cluster and choose the extraction button from the list. This extracted cluster functions just like a normal gated population. So I can double click to open in the workspace and I can continue gating or viewing and assessing this population as I would with traditional analysis methods. Cluster logic also contains an auto gating validation tool. So here, if I want to validate this cluster, I can select it in the list, choose the icon from the toolbar, and then from the pop-up window, I can define how I would like my auto gating to be managed. In this case, I want two levels of defined parameter combinations. The first being forward scatter area versus height, so I can gate out any doublets or triplets. Then I'll add a second defined level and select the forward scatter area versus size scatter area. After that, I want the software to determine the combination of parameters. Then click build gates and FlowLogic will create a traditional gating hierarchy and also extract the cluster. These gates will require some adjustments, but the combination of parameters will match that set in the auto gate setup window and the self-determined parameter combinations will follow the same marker order as displayed in the phenotype. Once the gates have been adjusted, both the final gated population and the cluster can be opened and compared directly alongside each other. Another way they can be assessed is by overlaying both populations and for example, viewing them as a histogram on all of the parameters. I'd now like to demonstrate flame logic, which provides a diagrammatic overview of the clusters and their relationships. When a file is selected, on the panel on the left, there will be an expandable folder hierarchy that shows each of the nodes of clusters and the subpopulations that share a common marker expression. These different families of clusters are also displayed on the right hand side where additional information can be turned on to get an overview of different cluster families. And you can see these update to represent the selected file. In this example we see the main node is a CD45 positive population and we can follow one arm down to the 11B positive cells, Lysic-C positive cells differentiating into the CSF1 receptor positive monocytes and the Lysic-G positive granulocytes. Additional information can be displayed using the options in the toolbar. So for example, the full phenotype for each cluster family along with the cell and family options. The cells option will provide the information on the event counts and number of clusters for that particular phenotype whilst the family option will show the total events and all clusters in that family of related phenotypes. This information can also be accessed after expanding the folder structure on the left. And this also acts as a filter. So if you click on any of the populations, you can see the diagram on the right is refined to reflect the selection on the left. The color for a given population can also be set from this panel and if this population is added to the file inspector, it will be displayed with the same selected color. In addition, any color settings that are performed within Flame Logic will be preserved in the summary table. So if I was to set another color, add this population to the file inspector, return to the summary table, you can see now the clusters that have been added to the sample have also been colored to match the selection from Flame Logic. The various elements within Cluster Logic can be exported as either an image or a CSV file, depending on the nature of the data. For example, if I wished to export the Flame Logic diagram for a given family of clusters, I can select the cluster on the left hand side, it will effectively filter the view on the right, and if I click the export button, I can save this structure as a PDF file. If I was to export the summary table, then this would save as a CSV or an XLSX file. 
I'll now run through a workflow where I extract multiple populations very quickly from all of these clustered files. Firstly, I'll filter for all files that express CD45 and display unique phenotypes. Then I'll select all of the phenotypes and build a fingerprint at once. I can view these fingerprints within the fingerprint window and all of these fingerprints contain a phenotype and a fluorescence value for each parameter. To use these fingerprints to search and match similar clusters from all files, I will select the phenotypes from the table, highlight all of my files, choose matching of phenotype in this case, and click the match button. It's also possible to use a phenotype to search for clusters with a similar mean fluorescence value in a given selection of parameters. These options are displayed to the panel on the left. All of the matched clusters are now displayed within the Match tab. And once again we have a range of filtering options. This is what will allow us to quickly identify and extract specific populations of cells. To begin, I want to extract all CD45 positive cells as a single population. So I'll filter for CD45 positive cells, tick the custom naming option, type in CD45 positive, and select the group and build icon from the toolbar. And you can see one by one, the CD45 population is added to the relevant sample in the file inspector. In order to extract a monocyte population, I'll further filter to display clusters that express CD11B and Ly6C, but are also negative for Ly6G and MHC class two. I will rename the custom population to monocytes and click the group and build icon. And again, you can see the monocyte population is now extracted and added to the file inspector. I'll extract one more population by altering my filtering in order to identify a granular site population. Once again, I'll change the custom name, select all of the identified clusters and click the group and build option. So as you can see, it is very quick and easy to identify any subpopulation of cells and add it to the file inspector. Once these have been added to the samples, if you open a plot and then open the side draw, you can see the clusters exist just like a gated population would. This means that a colour can be assigned to each population and then this colour will follow the population no matter what combination of parameters are displayed. And as mentioned before, gating can be performed on these extracted clusters and then as I'll demonstrate next, we can continue to analyse the statistics by building graphs in GraphLogic. So here, if we want to perform a statistical analysis, I can grab my two experimental groups, add them to the GraphLogic spreadsheet. I'll rename this data table as granular sites, select all of the linked data cells, and from the drop-down list, select the granular sites and choose a statistic, in this case, the event count. I can build graphs, perform statistical tests, and also add these elements to a report. The final point I'd like to make is that clustering doesn't have to be performed on the full data set. It can be performed on gated populations. However, the resulting clusters will differ slightly as a different number of events are being assessed. An alternative to clustering on gated populations is to use the Boolean function. For example, if you gate to identify viable cells, you could use an AND function to identify cells that exist within a cluster that are also viable. In many cases, these will be the same, but it is another option. I hope this video has provided enough information to begin your cluster analysis, but if you have further questions, please don't hesitate to contact us.